Welcome to WTSA here in New Delhi, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Philippe Metzger, who is the uh, Secretary General and CEO of IEC. Philippe, welcome to the studio. Thanks very much, Max, for having me. Well, it's great to see you. Now, I'd like to start off by asking you, uh, how can we harness uh, standardization processes to accelerate progress towards the UN Sustainable Development Goals? Yes, in the case of the IEC, we uh, stand for electric technology, um, electronics, IT, obviously, um, and you know, with a vision that we have of a, an all-electric and connected society, obviously, we are at the source of electrification of the world, uh, moving away from fossil fuels to clean um, energy production uh, to electricity. Um, and in that portfolio that we are operating with or producing, of course, we are at the core of um, producing standards on clean energy, uh, energy efficiency, having uh, conformity assessment services, uh, which are um, on you know, hydrogen, green hydrogen, uh, and things like that. So obviously, if you look at the core work we do, that is, in a sense, designed by chance of directly contributing to the uh, sustainability agenda. Uh, obviously, if you look at the, at the different uh, SDGs, number seven on uh, access to clean and affordable energy is particularly directly impacted by, by, we do, by what we do. But I would like to add a dimension, not just to harness what we do anyway, but of course also to be um, targeted in choosing the topics. We are member-based, so our members, our experts have to bring uh, the new standards topics to the table and also decide how they want to offer conformity assessment services. But in doing so, with the increasing awareness of the urgency, of the emergency that we have around sustainability and climate change, um, I think the, the, the goal uh, has to be as well to then define the work items in a very specific way uh, to even have an even stronger impact on uh, the sustainability. And I would like to add maybe one dimension, that is also the advocacy. I think a number of uh, stakeholders, private, public, um, the civil society, the economy, regulators, legislators, do not yet know enough about standardization and the impact and the benefits it brings for, also for sustainability. And so advocacy matters very much. This is something we're doing in, in collaboration, uh, especially also with uh, the International Standards Organization, ISO, and with the ITU. Uh, we are going to have in uh, the COP29 in Baku for the first time a joint standards pavilion, uh, which we want to leverage uh, with ISO, ITU, and other standards organizations and other stakeholders which think we have to promote and increase the dialogue and the awareness around standards and conformity assessment. So I think they're really very different dimensions. You can't just say, well, this is what we're doing anyway. It's about electricity and clean energy, so we can harness that. That's great, but we have to go beyond that. What about artificial intelligence? How can standardization contribute to establishing a robust framework for responsible AI? IC really wants to contribute to the use of AI um, so that it creates trust. We know what great potential AI has. We also know what the concerns are of many stakeholders, of civil society, uh, of um, uh, policy makers. And so we really want to contribute to the utmost extent to the trust uh, in AI. And it's interesting to see, and we saw that now with the Global Digital Compact um, uh, and also with the um, report uh, from the high-level advisory body on AI, uh, what value uh, standards have, how this is now increasingly recognized, again, standards and conformity assessment in that, where uh, there's also a call uh, for the standards development organizations, including us, to, to collaborate. Um, and so we are actually coming from a space where for many years now, since 2017 actually, uh, in a joint setting with ISO, we have a joint technical committee that deals specifically with AI, which has developed already leading global standards that are used. Uh, quite recently also, um, our new uh, ISO IEC 42001 standard on management of AI systems, uh, trying to also manage risks through that. And there as well, we see as the world is grappling with the governance of AI, that uh, the awareness is increasing and the acknowledgement of the impact that standards will have. So that's a very strong um, a key we have, a sort of a track record already that we want to bring to the table in further collaboration because we will 
want to work more closely. We, are, of course, want to make sure our core processes, which produce concrete output already, have done that for many years, that we can preserve that, but we want to bring that into a wider context, and that's why we just announced uh, yesterday, with, together with ITU and ISO, that we want to also, in 25, have an international um, AI standard summit that, uh, as a process, really, to bring stakeholders together to create, or maybe also common uh, database to, 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 to keep track, and of course, uh, we already have a lot of experience with uh, ITU uh, in the context of the AI for Good uh, summit as well. Exactly. And obviously, before 2025, you, you mentioned that we've got another collaboration at uh, COP29 in Baku, yeah. and uh, we're obviously there looking at green digital action yeah. as well for us. It's extremely uh, important and, and, a, and a topic that is, I think, key. In terms of recent advancements in standards, which are you most enthusiastic about and, and, and uh, um, which do you think holds the most promise? Well, first of all, I'm not an engineer myself, but I'm a tech enthusiast. Um, so there are many developments I see which are absolutely thrilling, um, where I'm not the expert in, but we'll see how our experts work and what they produce. Um, we have a community, the IC, of uh, up to 30,000 experts or more, including the conformity assessment work, globally, uh, who work together every day very hard to produce these standards, to apply conformity assessment services around that. And I think I would be unfair as the Secretary General uh, of uh, this organization with all these um, uh, very brilliant people to pick one out and tell them that is, I find, more exciting than the other. So what I maybe would say is, um, in terms of how we produce standards, I'm super excited about how to leverage the digital processes and digital tools. We have just published our first standard uh, in the IC that was entirely created on an online collaboration platform. We call that OSD, Online Standards Development. And that, of course, is a step towards a world where we want to produce ultimately what we call smart standards and conformity assessment. That means um, content that is in a digital format, in a data file, that can be used by machines, that can be absorbed, interpreted. It is a really challenging task. We need to mobilize a lot of resources for that. We're doing that also together with, uh, with ISO. But I'm very excited about this perspective because I think we see that there are more and more standards needed. We're not in a shrinking sector here. We're an expanding sector, but we have to be uh, uh, sort of uh, cognizant of the needs of the users of standards that are digital. And so that is an extremely thrilling, um, I think, dimension of what we do, uh, and that we can leverage in all the different fields uh, and as many exciting specific sector uh, standards we are producing that I could mention, I would rather focus on that bigger picture. And then the other dimension, in a sense, I've mentioned in context with AI, the collaboration aspect is very important. I think we work more and more also in the field of sustainability, for instance, with other organizations, uh, for instance, with the International um, Agency on Renewable Energies, IRENA, uh, which, uh, with which we are collaborating much more closely to bring our know-how to the table. So I think digitalization and having finding new ways of producing standards content and how it's um, absorbed for also for conformity assessment, and on the other hand, um, the uh, collaboration aspect, I think are super exciting um, right now and for the future. Philip Metzger, Secretary General and CEO of the International Electrotechnical Commission, the IEC. Thank you very much for joining us in the studio and we very much look forward to catching up with you again in the very near future, I'm sure. Thanks very much, Max. It's always a pleasure to be here. Thank you. And if you've enjoyed this interview, which I'm sure you will have, then do check out our other interviews on our YouTube channel, as well as our podcasts on our podcast channels, SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts from. And for more information, do check out our website at www.itu.int. Thanks for tuning in.